Greetings Mac Warriors, my name is TTB and this is yet another buying guide for Mac Warrior Online. Now today guys, we are talking about the heroic MC deals that are currently available in MWO. You're getting 50% off Hero Max, you're getting 30% more MC if you purchase MC, and you get 50% off of drop decks. Most interesting for us, however, of course, is always the question, which Max are on sale in this case all the hero max and also which ones you should buy because there's quite a difference in performance that these max can give you now the thing is mac base are currently not on sale so hopefully you bought enough mac base last time i told you to and uh, we're gonna go over those max quickly um i've done these videos in the past and while I haven't done a comprehensive guide on Hero Max, I have done uh, some videos where I recommended to buy certain Max and not buy certain Max. So I'm trying to be as concise as possible here, but there's so many people always telling me how helpful they find it that I make these videos. So I'm gonna do a full run through. And uh, if you're just interested in a specific weight class or whatever, just skip ahead in the video and you will see when I get to the uh, appropriate Max because I'm always gonna click them and you're always gonna see them over here on the right hand side. Also, if you're interested in builds and how to play these Max, just use the YouTube search on my channel and you'll be able to find the proper Mac, for example, just searching for Annihilator. Okay, first off is the Adder, the Cinder. Um, I'm going to try to give you guys a quick idea in terms of how much I personally uh, view the Mac as, as useful and good and how much I like it. And I'm going to call them either a must-buy, very good, or good, and okay. And there might also be a meh category, but let's see. So the Adder Cinder, I would say that is in the okay area. Uh, it's just an Adder, it can't do that much, so it's not that spectacular. The Arctic Cheetah Shard, uh, some of you guys like it a lot. I just consider it a okay mech, but, but nothing to really cry home about. Commando Death Snell. Um, I would also say okay, um, can be a lot of fun, uh, surprisingly tanky for such a small mech, uh, but definitely not one of the highlights. The Cougar we have here, <laughs> can I even show it? There, there we go, interesting paint job actually, that is the Cougar Blood Adder, uh, that is also in the category okay to meh. In the Firestarter category, we've got two actually, we've got the Firestarter Ember and we've got the Firestarter Firestorm. Now. The Ember, I would say, that is okay to good. And uh, well, the Firestorm, they're actually they're actually very similar if you look at it. They're just switching some of the energy hard points and uh, ballistic hard points. So literally, there is there is not much difference between the two guys, to be quite honest. I much just go with the Ember because it seems to have better uh, bonuses on machine gun rate of fire. Then there's the Flea Romeo 5000. Uh, again, we're in the okay to good category, but there's definitely better Flea out there. Incubus coming up, that is the Incubus Saber. And once again, me personally, I view it in the okay category. It does have some interesting high hard points though, but due to the fact that it's only a 30 ton mech, you're very limited what you can do with those hard points and there's a better Incubus out there. Then we go to the Javelin High there. Um, once again, an interesting mech I would say that's probably okay to use, can be good for brawling uh, with missiles and energy weapons, definitely a good mixture, um, can be fun to play. General Oxide I would put into the okay to good category, four missile hard points, got missile cooldown quirks and some good structure. Uh, it's just a fat little inner sphere light but uh, enjoyable to play. Then this mech has a beautiful, beautiful paint job. That is the Jenner 2C Fury. Um, I would put that in the Otake Okega category, I would say. Um, the reason why I put it there is because if you're looking at six machine gun light mechs or whatnot, you're looking at the Piranha and uh, this mech basically just has half the firepower potentially. So yeah, what can you do? Now here is something interesting, the Kit Fox Purifier. I would say very good to must have. Uh, you can uh, fit it with ECM, you can fit it with all sorts of uh, nice weaponry, and if you have these two insanely high hard points for the purifier, which make this a very good base model, and then you just use Omnipods how you like them. One of the mechs that I enjoy a lot. Locust Pirate's Bane, good to very good, I would say. Definitely uh, a mech that you should have in your inventory if you'd like to play light mechs. Uh, a little bit of uh, lasers going around here with ECM. Always fun to play, and this is this is the epitome of being a little shit. Then we go to the Mistlings, the Ebon Dragoon. 
And um, yeah, I must say, mm, okay to me. Uh, I'm not that convinced of that thing. I don't like Mystics in particular because of the arms, which are so big and easy to get crit off. Then the Osiris, the Sekhmet. Uh, once again, one of the mechs that is in the okay area, but definitely nothing to cry home about. The Panther, what is it, the Katana Cat. Um, very interesting, has a great paint job, has some nice quirks, I believe, for PPC velocity, 40%, 10% energy cooldown, 10, 50% energy heat. Um, I would say interesting, um, I would say good, actually, especially since it has, also has base armor everywhere and uh, can be a good PPC long-range mech, definitely. Then the Piranha Cypher, I would say uh, very good, um, a lot of fun to play, 9 energy hard points, 6 ballistic hard points, so... Uh, this is the little man's dream that can do a lot of burst damage very, very quickly. So definitely something that you guys should check out if you like the Piranha type gameplay. The Raven Hugin, uh, well, it's a Raven that doesn't have ECM. Yeah, it's got four ballistic hard points and two missile hard points. Uh, could be interesting with something like streaks and, and machine guns and whatnot, but it's still a Raven. It's easy to kill the side torso, so I would not recommend it. Same thing here uh, for the Spider, the Anansi. It does uh, have the ability to run a double AMS, but um, other than that, nothing special about it. Now we get to a mech that I personally love a lot. The Urban Mech K9 and the Urban Mech, what is that? SC, that's the Street Cleaner. Street Cleaner, I would say, okay to good area. Urban Mech K9, that is a must buy, in my opinion. It is one of the best mechs out there in terms of, especially in terms of light mechs. It basically is a a uh, medium to heavy mech that's disguised as a light mech and it has great maneuverability can twist its torso 360 degrees and uh, can run a lot of cool builds plus of course the best one being five million pulses plus it has this amazing police siren with the police lights so that's a must buy same thing goes for the wolfhound grinner a very very strong wolfhound can run ecm has bonus armor again five medium pulses is a very good build for that thing must buy in my opinion then we go into the mediums, the Arctic Wolf. We've got here the Blood Kit. Um, <laughs> I, I, I would say okay to me. Uh, I haven't really gotten much experience on this mech. I haven't even bought it yet, so maybe I will buy it this round along. Followed up by the Assassin Dark Death, the Biter Special. Um, Biter likes this thing a lot. Um, it has some interesting quirks, but uh, overall, to me, it's maybe okay, but, but rather meh. Different story on the Blackjack Arrow. This thing can run, for example, large pulse lasers and six machine guns. Uh, fun mech to play, has a nice sheen on it, on the paint job as well. So I would say this is, this is definitely okay to, to good mech, in my opinion. The Black Lanner Bellonarius. Well, um, you can have these uh, six ballistic hard points in uh, the arms here. That is interesting. Um, you can also have mask on the Black Lanner, so interesting yes is it is it okay yes i think so is it good maybe but that's that's about it different story on the bushbacker high roller i would say um, i would personally give it a good to very good it's a bushy it has these nice hard points it can uh, run a variety of builds with up to three ballistics uh, the only thing that it cannot run is some uh, short range missile build so this is going to be a Daka or Daka plus energy weapons build, but for that, oh, I could also run a Marine 40. So you have a lot of options here. I would say definitely good to very good. The Centurion Yenlo Wang, this is a mech for people who like the lore. It only has this one ballistic hard point here and the two lasers in the CT, and that is it. So if you want to learn to twist and shoot, good mech, but other than that, uh, I would say definitely meh because it just cannot run as much firepower as it needs to. The Cicada X5, this thing has a bonus on um, where is it? Bup, 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 bup. Missile cooldown and velocity for uh, for energy hard points to missile hard points. Nothing to write home about. I would say um, okay, but that's it. Same thing for the crap Florentine. Uh, there are better crap models out there. It has the ballistics cooldown quirk, um, but other than that, uh, you're shooting from the claws, which means that they are very far apart. They're very low slung. So in my opinion, nope, don't get it. The Enforcer Gilly, that's one of the Enforcers, or the only Enforcer that can actually run ECM, and uh, Stealth even, has 15% Ballistics cooldown quirk. I would say okay to good, if you like the uh, like 50 ton in a sphere gameplay, definitely worth checking out. Then we get to the Griffins, there is the 1E Sparky, and the Griffin Ares. Now the Sparky, I would say, in my opinion, okay, yes, especially if you want to do something like double heavy PPC, yeah, nice high hard points. 
uh, okay to good, I would say. The Griffin Ares, well, has four energy hard points and two missile hard points, only wrench quirks and a little bit of structure. If you compare that, to, for example, to Griffin 2N or whatnot, I would say that this is uh, okay to, to rather meh, in my opinion, as far as the Griffins in particular are concerned. Then we get to the health spawn 7D2, the Paralyzer, and uh, that thing is definitely interesting, has a lot of energy hard points and missile hard points. The crooks are a little bit lackluster, but you do have ECM in it, and I always enjoy mechs with ECM because they are easier to play and more fun to play, in my opinion, so um, you should definitely think about that. Uh, I would put that in the okay to, to good, maybe even very good category. Um, did I actually skip over a mech here? Give me one second, guys. Did I skip over the ice fridge? Or just hasn't it just come up yet? We'll see, we'll see. Um, looking at the next one, this is going to be the Hunchback Gridiron. That thing has a bonus cooldown on the Inner Sphere Gauss as well as Ballistic. So you get actually 20% uh, Gauss cooldown on this thing, which is not too bad. Um, it's definitely not the strongest Hunchback out there, but uh, it has this nice writing crunch time on this torso. And it's definitely a solid mech that you can play. So I would say this is a okay to good mech that you can definitely use. Uh, same thing goes for the Hunchback 2C Deathwish, has this great paint job, but uh, it has some problems here with the arms. As you can see, I'm not a fan of low slung arms that are spaced far apart. Luckily, they have lasers in them, so that means you still get the accuracy, but you need a lot of space to get all these weapons to bear. But if you want to run something like PPC and, and, and Dakar, definitely worth a look. I would say okay to good. The Huntsman Packet, this can be a nice basis for a nice missile build on the Huntsman. And uh, also, if you enjoy the Huntsman gameplay, you can use this as your base model and get the added 30% C-Build bonus. So I would say this is a good to very good mech that you can pick up. There we go, there is the Ice Fridge, the Ice Fred Rainbow Crow. Um, it can run ECM, yes, it can run these two large lasers, and then you have, have something that used to be insanely annoying in scout mode. But uh, in my opinion, okay to meh, um, I would stay away from that. A different story on the Kintaro Golden Boy. That's the easiest way to get a golden looking skin. It's a solid mech in my opinion. I've had a lot of fun with it. It has five missile hard points, can run a wide variety of builds, has tempers and missile cooldown quirk even, has armor everywhere. You know what? I will give that a good to very good. Again, guys, my personal opinion. You guys might have a different one. Uh, if you disagree, that is fine. If you ha uh, have a different opinion, just let me know down in the comments. And if you agree with me, also let me know down in the comments. Following up is the Nova Breaker. I will break you. Now this thing has two ballistics, five energy, and two missile hard points. But as you can see, the missile hard points are in the arms and whatnot. Not a huge fan of that. Um, interesting skin, but that's about it. There are better Nova models out there, so I would give this thing an okay to meh rating. Then we have two Phoenix Hawk Hero Max. We've got the Rock, and we've got the uh, Phoenix Hawk Kuroi Kiri. Well. You don't see them out very often, and uh, they're not that special. And I wouldn't say that they are actually really good because I don't even have ECM, so I would I would keep away from them. It, ha it has a great paint job, though. Like the paint job is really nice, but that's about it, guys. I would say no, meh, don't do it. Um, interesting enough, the Shadow Cat Mishi Peshu. It has this UAC jam chance of 20%, which is interesting, but you cannot put that much weaponry on this thing. It just has 45 tons in total. And I would say, mm, I would also wouldn't get it. I would also give it a meh rating. The Shadowhawk Grey Death that has a very storied past, uh, Grey Death Legion, or, um, very interesting. But um, overall, I think there are better models out there, especially the uh, loyalty variant. So I will give this an okay rating, but there are definitely stronger models out there. Stormcrow Lacerator, well, it's interesting because of the, uh, the LBXs that it has in the arms, but... And, and the paint job, honestly. The paint job it might be the main reason why you want to get this mech, otherwise, uh, don't bother. Switching over to the Trebuchet, the Lou de Guerre, and uh, this thing I would actually say is good to very good. I've had a lot of fun with this thing. It has 10% flat cooldown, 10% missile velocity, uh, got quirks for energy. It is actually not that bad, and uh, I've, I've had a lot of fun with this, especially with the with the missile hard points here in the torsos. Can also run an AMS. So overall, this is a fun mech to play, and it has also got a gorgeous paint job. Somebody really did a really good job on that. So 
one of my one of my uh, silent favorites, I would say. The Uzeal Belial. Um, I haven't really played it that much. Some people like it a lot uh, for the for the light PPCs and whatnot. Uh, but personally, I think light PPCs are bullshit. So my 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 personal opinion is meh, and that's it. Switching over to the Vapor Eagle. Well. We've got the rival here, and uh, this thing might be interesting because of these three Daka cannons in the arm here. Um, but other than that, it's not an Omni Max, so you can't switch those out, and then you can't you can't really do much with it. Um, you don't see that out on the battlefield that much. So my recommendation is also don't buy that. There's better variants out there. Then we get to the Vindicator. Yes, the Saint Ives Blues. Now that thing, um, definitely interesting, you can do some good stuff with that. I've done a Vindicator video not far along, that wasn't the Sand I've used, it was a different mech, but um, it is it is still, I would say, okay. Um, and if you like the Vindicator, uh, especially the story of the Vindicator or, or the, the history of the Vindicator in Battletech, definitely worth checking out. Viper Medusa, well... I'm not that convinced on it. There are a few people out there who do amazing things with the Vipers, especially with the Medusa, but... Um, for me personally, I would put it in the maybe okay area, but that's about it. Um, same thing for the the Vulcan here. That is the is it Bloodlust? Yeah, the Bloodlust. Um, there's much better models out there. It does have though these uh, four missile hard points straight in the middle of the mech, which is interesting. So side torso, CT, and and uh, cockpit. So that might be of interest to you and might make a good brawler. But I would say maybe maybe in the okay category. Um, Wolverine Quarantine. It's it's an interesting Wolverine. It does have the missile cooldown and, and velocity. It also has the 20% ballistics cooldown. But then again, where is the ballistics? Well, it's all in the right arm. Um, and it, it just... This, this mech is a very right side uh, favoring mech, though. And uh, that makes it a little bit hard to play. You can do a lot of twisting, yes. Um, but overall, you're centering all your weapons over there in the side. And if you lose it, then it's over. So... Um, if you want to, try it out. Uh, for me, I would say it's it's maybe okay, but not higher than that. Now, again, we are getting into an interesting mech, the Archer Tempest. This thing is the only Archer that can run ECM, has uh, energy and missile hardpoints, as well as missile heat generation, and insane plus armor values. Really good mech, in my opinion. I would say really good to maybe even must buy if you like MRM gameplay, for example. Double MRM 40 will be very strong on this mech, and you do have ECM to back up your teammates. Then we get to the Black Knight Partisan. It's got a great paint job with the gold and, and the uh, the silver plating here. Um, it is, the I believe, the only Black Knight that can run um, ballistics and missiles. Uh, one arm can do ballistics, the other arm can... Uh, or the one, one arm can do ballistics or missiles, depending on which slots you use and how big those items are. And you get cooldown uh, quirks on that as well. So if that's something for you, try it out. But here's the problem, it is going to be left-handed. The ballistics and the missiles are going to be in the left arm, which can be a problem because of today's rotator potato meta that always goes around the right side, so it's a little bit more difficult to get the left side to bear, and the left side is going to be taken out sooner, so keep that in mind. So I would say this one is okay in my book, uh, maybe even good, but not higher. The Cataphract Ia Muromets. Well, it's a Cataphract. Um, it is very much out of the meta. Um, it can be interesting, yeah. Um, you can do, for example, like th three LB10s and whatnot on this thing. Uh, I would say it's an okay mech, but not higher than that. Then we get to the catapults. There is the Jester with the bunny ears. <laughs> and there is the Butterbee. I would say both of them are definitely okay, maybe even good. Um, fun to play. One you can do as a splat cat with lasers. The other one you can do with a, like a long range build with medium lasers as backup weapons and two bunny ears for AMS defense. Next up is the champion Invictus. This mech I would say is okay. You can do some broader builds with missiles and whatnot, but it is going to be a very wide boy. So keep that in mind. There's better champion variants out there. Just, just saying. Then we get up to the dragon. We've got the fang and the flame. Um, both of them are definitely not mainstream. Um, Fang has the ability to run more ballistics uh, in the arm here, and the uh, flame actually has how many missile hard points? Let me guess uh, correct. Only one missile hard point, so one ballistic, four energy, and one missile plus AMS, versus two ballistic, three energy, and one missile plus AMS. There's really not much difference between the two. Um, I would not recommend getting any of them. Um, there's, there's more solid Siebel variants out there for the Dragon in particular, and it's also not that great of a mech. 
Different story for the Eben Jaguar. Uh, Eben Jaguar, sorry. Uh, this thing, the Esprit de Corps, uh, is a really, really solid basis for any Eben Jag build that you could do. And uh, just for that fact, I would actually say very good, uh, maybe even must have, because it will allow you to run all your Eben Jags with the added C builds bonus. It has a nice paint job. And it also comes with some specific hard points that you can't get on any other mech uh, in the Ebon Jack category. So I would say very good to must buy for this particular mech. Then we get to the Grasshopper, the Mjolnir. And this is the only Grasshopper, I believe, that can run Ballistic here in the left arm. Once again, left armed. Has a nice paint job, but uh, all the other grass Grasshoppers can do the same thing, um, if not even better. Um, so I would say interesting, yes. Okay, definitely yes. But it's a little bit of an odd thing. Next up, we are in the very good to must buy category. That's the Hellbringer Virago. Uh, you can do all sorts of Hellbringer builds on this. You have the uh, Rocket Fist if you want it. You can do my ATM build, for example, that I've showed off uh, a few weeks ago. That is very, very powerful. And of course, you can do the Laser Vomit Hellbringer builds as well with, a, with this as the basis. So I would say this is a must buy in my opinion. The Hellfire Void, you can do a lot of stuff with it. I would say this is a good to very good mech. Uh, has a nice paint job as well, can run uh, a variety of weapons, especially with Daka and lasers. Definitely, I would say, good to very good, as I already said. Jägermack, the firebrand, um, I would put that with the two ballistics and six energy hard points into the okay to good area, but it is still going to be a Jägermack. Um, you're either going to be slow with a standard engine, or you're going to be a little bit faster with an XL engine that can get killed off quite quickly. So uh, keep that in mind when you're choosing the Jäger mech. Then we've got the Linebacker Red Line. Well, it got the ability to run the Ballistic in uh, the left arm here and a Missile Slot in the right arm. But other than that, it's just a Linebacker. I would say it's not really worth um, getting that thing. So I, I would say, mm, okay, maybe, yes, but definitely recommend it. We're going over to the Mad Dogs. We got the Bandit here with the double ballistics in the side torsos. Um, I would say okay to good. Uh, can be a lot of fun to play, especially with the double UX 20s. But uh, be careful here. This thing it does not have the UX 20 quirks, so maybe you want to scale those down to UX 10s before you overheat and cook yourself. Then we've got the Revenant. I've done a few videos on that as well. I would say definitely a good mech to use. Um, doesn't have the same firepower as, for example, the normal models that can run up to six missile hard points, but you can run uh, four energy weapons as well and get like a nice mixed and balanced build with lasers and, and SRMs or lasers and streaks. So I would say okay to good in my opinion. Now we get to the good to very good area. That is the Marauder Bounty Hunter 2. Uh, in my opinion, very good, maybe even must buy. Very solid mech, can run a heavy gauss up here, for example, and then six medium lasers. A lot of fun to play and also has a nice paint job. Nightjar Jet Kite, I would say um, okay in my, in my book. Maybe even good, but nothing further than that. Nova Cat. Now this thing is a weird one with the energy hard points in the arms and in the side torsos. Um, in my opinion, it's not worth it to get the Cobra Cat because uh, there are other baseline variants out there that do the thing best, better than that. And also Nova Cats are a little bit of an odd little mechs uh, with all the weapons always concentrated mostly in the arms. So they can easily shot, be shot off. So not a big recommendation on my part here. The Orion Protector, good to very good, a lot of fun, uh, LB20, MRM40, very, very solid build. Also has this insane uh, paint job, of the orange, that actually fits quite well. So in my opinion, good to very good. The Orion 2C Skull. Honestly, guys, uh, I think that's the weakest model out there for the Orion 2Cs. Um, not a huge fan. It has a great, beautiful paint job, but... Uh, that's that's about it. Um, if you want to get it for the style, you're just in love Orion 2Cs, get it. If not, stay away from it. 100% contrast, quick draw, IV4, must buy. You guys know why. MRM30 builds or MRM40 builds with XL engines. Insanely strong, insanely good quirks with the 20% uh, missile cooldown and all the armor. This is, this is a must buy. This is one of the best mechs in the game. Then we got the Rifleman, we got the Legend Killer and the Dow Breaker. The Legend Killer might be interesting because of the lore, but that's about it. Um, I would say okay to good. The Dow Breaker um, is a little bit of an odd thing, it's a little bit asymmetrical. I would put that more into the 
um, okay area, but not higher. Then we've got the Rifleman 2C here, the Chiron X. Um, it's a little bit of a weird one, but uh, I would say it can be good. You can put ATMs in there and a little bit of Dakar uh, and add some lasers for backup. And it has a nice paint job, so I would put it in the okay to good area. Switching over to the Roughnecks, we've got the Reaver here. Uh, in interesting, nice hard points for the energy weapons, but the arms, once again, with the Dakar, far slung apart and uh, therefore very problematic. So I would say okay to meh. The Roughneck Powerhouse, in my opinion, and this is my personal opinion, must have really really good brawler very nimble very agile nice and high hard points here for let's say an ac20 and triple srm6 a lot of fun to play that's a mini atlas basically so in my opinion very good to must buy summoner we have got the uh, the pd what the hell was that the pride oh yeah there we go um if you like the summoner gameplay you can give this figure a shot but uh it used to be that you had to get this one for the one uh Torso hardpoint, but since they've brought out new models uh, since then with loyalty and whatnot, it's not that needed anymore. Um, all in all, the Summoner is a great mech for learning to pop tart, but it's fallen a little bit out of favor for um, in favor of other mechs, so keep that in mind. Then we go to the Sun Spiders. We've got the Manul in here. That thing can be insanely powerful with ERPPCs, for example, and uh, in my opinion, is a very good mech. The Sun Spider Vanguard uh, is interesting. Interesting, I would say this is good to very good. I would put the Manul a little bit better than that. Thanatos Hangover, in my opinion, the other Thanatos mechs are better. This is fun to play, don't get me wrong. I would say this is a good mech, but uh, there are other Thanatos models out there that are very good to must buy, and they are not hero mechs, so uh, you can skip this one. Thunderbolt! <laughs> <laughs> the top dog. Um, if you like Thunderbolts, then this is a must buy. If you like heavy mechs and you're thinking about Thunderbolts, then I would say very good. Very enjoyable mech to play. Lots of hard points for laser, vomit, and uh, very enjoyable mech to play. So um, I would say, yeah, the top dog, very good to must buy. Timberwolf Warrant. Well, the Timberwolves used to be good. They're not anymore. So uh, it has a great paint job. It looks pretty, but that's about it. Okay to meh. That's, that's all I can say about Timberwolves. Yes, you can make them work. You've seen me make them work with, for example, streak and ATM builds and whatnot. But the warrant itself, no, no. Okay, to meh. Warhammer Black Widow, very good to must have. It has these nice concentrated hard points in the middle here. You can do builds, for example, Triple Rack 2 and XL Engine and turn this thing into a real, real beast. Um, or you have five builds, you have 10 builds. You can do so many things with the Warhammer Black Widow. I would say very good to must have. Then we finally get to the Assault Max Annihilator Mean Baby. In my opinion, must have Dr. Lermenstein and Dr. Brodenstein. These two mechs are insanely powerful and at their respective ranges, insanely deadly to enemies. So, yeah, if you like Annihilators, Mean Baby, get that thing. Also, very powerful with MRM builds. The Atlas Boar's Head, one of the first tier mechs, if not the first tier mech ever put into the game, uh, I would say okay, but that's about it. On the other side, the Atlas Kraken, that thing, very powerful, very good to must buy. If you like Atlas gameplay, then I would actually say must buy, um, even though there are other comparatively good Atlases out there, um, very good to must buy on the Kraken. Awesome, the pretty baby. Meh. That's it. Don't fall for this thing. It, it ain't pretty. The Banshee Lama Lynch. Meh. I will say meh. It's nothing to write home about. Maybe maybe okay, but that's about it. Banshee Siren, I would say that's an okay mech. Um, nothing interesting in particular about it, aside from that uh, high mount for missiles, but that's it. Then we go to the Battlemaster, the Hellslinger, I would say okay to good, but there are definitely battle, better Battlemasters out there. Bloodasp Rancor, must buy, because of the side trosses for um, missile slots. If you like Bloodasps, it's a must buy. If you don't like Bloodasps, but you're interested in a good and really good assault mechs, then definitely um, view this mech as very good to must buy. Charger, number 7, the lucky number 7. If it were for the skin alone, I would say must buy, but if you look at the performance of the mech in particular, uh, <laughs> I would put it as okay to meh, and that's about it. Um, I don't think that's worth 3000 MC, PGI. Nope. 
Then we go to the Corsairs. Well, first we've got the Ravager. That thing is interesting. That thing can be very interesting. Um, I would say for the Ravager, um, it has Tempus and Ballistic cooldown. Uh, you can run um, double nice Ballistics on that, double Gauss Rifles, for example. Um, okay to good, definitely. M maybe even more in the good area. The Corsair Broadside, that was a mech that was added for free. It can be a nice um, sniper mech, actually. I had a lot of fun with that, so I would say okay to good to maybe even very good. Um, there are other Corsairs out there, however, that I find a little bit more powerful. Cyclops, Sleipnir, must buy, period. No discussions. This is one of the strongest mechs in-game. Very agile, can carry a lot of weapons, must buy. Direwolf, Ultraviolet. Uh, the king of long-range engagements, the absolute king of long-range engagement, engagements. If you like assault gameplay, must buy. Um, other than that, very, very good. Very enjoyable, but also very situational. Executioner Cherby. Um, okay to meh. Great paint job, but that's about it. It is an executioner. Fafnir Wrath, very good to must buy. Very powerful mech, insanely nice paint job with that purplish, bluish tint and the gold. I love it. It's a Fafnir, it's got ECM as well, in my opinion, must buy. Gargoyle Kinwolf, one of the weapons of ass destruction. It's a gargoyle, it has a nice paint job. If you enjoy the gargoyle gameplay, you get one that you get 30% uh, Siebel bonus on. So I would say um, very good, uh, in my opinion, even to must buy area. There are gargoyles that have. There's a gargoyle that has two hard points for energy weapons in the CT. That is not a hero mech, but if you want to swap out one uh, small laser for 30% um, C build bonus, I will do that any day. The Hatamoto Chi Shugo. Meh to okay. Meh to okay. That's that's it. You've seen the videos that I've done on this build uh, on this mech with different builds. It's you could say it's okay, but that's about it. There's nothing special about it. The Highlander Heavy Metal has a very unique Warhorn. It has the Heavy Metal typing over here, and uh, it can be a fun mech to play. It has also good sensible weapon mounts, and uh, you don't see that many of them, but they are quite powerful, and uh, if you, of course, know how to play them. So I would say good to very good, definitely. The Highlander 2C Keeper, also good to very good. Um, I enjoy both Highlander and Highlander 2C hero mechs a lot. The King Crab Kaiju can do a lot of damage with, uh, let's say, a heavy Gauss Rifle at, and um, a mixture of large pulses and medium lasers. Definitely, or you could put MRMs on top here with lasers. You have a lot of combination um, possibilities, so I would say good to very good. Kodiak Spirit Bear, good to very good. It is a brawler mech that also has mass capability. It used to be insanely good. It used to be a must-buy. Since the engine desync, not worth it that much anymore, but still interesting mech to play and uh, something that you don't see that often, but can still be played to good effect, so good to very good. Madcat, Mark II, Death Strike. Need I say more? Must buy. Yeah, it is the laser vomit and gauze slash laser vomit and UAC-10 build mech. Insanely good, must buy. Moro II, the Alpha. <laughs> We've had our difficulties with this one. I would say good to very good, but not higher than that. Very nice paint job, though. Moro 2C Scorch, good to very good, can make a nice brawler. Mauler, Knockout, mm, I would say in the good area, potentially very good, but I would put it just in the good area. There's nothing insanely special about it, except those nice high hard points for the uh, missiles. Nightstar, Wolf Phoenix, good to very good, can run, for example, MRM 120 builds, which is very powerful. You don't see that many Nightstars out there, um, and if you look at the quirks, for example, you see why. Basically, there's nothing there. Uh, somebody must have been sleeping in the quirk department. So, um, still has these hard points nice and high up there, so I would say good to very good indeed. The Stalker, Misery, once again, good to very good. And uh, now you have to excuse me for a second, because... Apparently, PGI doesn't like me to talk bad about the game because the game just crashed. <laughs> well, guys, and here we are back in our mech recommendations. And I just realized I actually have my overlay running down below, my Twitch overlay. I didn't uh, check to see whether I had actually changed the proper to the proper scene in my recording program. Apologies about that. So um, if you want to make a mockery out of me, you can write down in the comments below, uh, lol, overlay with a little heart.
<laughs> okay, so Stock and Misery, um, in my opinion, very interesting mech. Can run, for example, Gauss, MRM40s, and medium lasers. Can be deceptively powerful. So I would say good to very good. And it is a stalker. You don't see that many out of, of them out there. Supernova, the boiler, one of the double UAC 20 mechs. I would say good to very good uh, if you enjoy Supernova gameplay, if you enjoy Clan Assaults. Definitely worth a look. And the Ultra Auto Cannon 20 double taps simultaneous is just, it's just great. It just hits like a truck. So good to very good. The Victor Dragon Slayer, it used to be a must buy. And nowadays I would say, uh, I would still put it in the good area, but it's not as good as it used to be. Then we go over to the Warhammer 2C, we've got the Maul and the Bludgeon. The Bludgeon is a lemon, that's a meh mech. It looks great, but it was free, and there's a reason it was free. Um, it's, not, it's not very good, I would say meh. Okay at best. However, the Maul, that's a different story. That is a good to very good assault mech, it has a great paint job. Just looks gorgeous. It has the ability to run double gauss rifles here and some lasers at this height, so you expose 50% of your mech and you can do some good damage. Then we've got the Warhawk Nanook. Um, I personally think the strongest Warhawks are the ones that are using ERPPCs, so um, this is a little bit of an oddball. Uh, I would say okay to maybe good, but not higher than that. And then the Zeus Skokomish, last but not least, this is the assault mech that can go 115 kph with mask and for SRM6s, it is a mech that you want to play when you want to have some fun and you want to chase down some, some fast mediums or some slow lights with an assault mech, then this is the mech to go for. You can also do insane flanking maneuvers where the enemy will never understand what happened because they all of a sudden have an assault mech in their back. So I would say for that reason, good to very good. Um, speaking from a pure... Um, standpoint of looking at the mech of how it does on the battlefield i would say okay at best but for the fun factor good to very good well and that has been my little overview um i was just looking at the time and i was looking at the uh, clock down there and it's like 39 minutes recording so the finished video will be about like 35 ish minutes or so so um here we go with me saying i want to be brief but then again there are over well over 100 mech models out there and uh, i thought at least a few sentences is what all of them deserve so hopefully this has been helpful to some of you to decide whether you want to buy some stuff whether you want to spend some of the mc that you have lying around and uh, get one of these and if you do let me know what you got down in the comments below other than that this has been ttv wherever you're on this planet have a great day i'm out of here